Thank you for joining us today at Mentor Gaming Labs. And today we'll be painting our new Marauder for Battletech. So this came out of the new Command Lance released by Catalyst Game Labs. So this is the plastic model here. And what we're going to do is today we are going to paint this up in the colors of the 1st Federated Sons Armored Cavalry Regiment. This is the regiment I field for games of Alpha Strike. And to do that, and to save a lot of time there, is uh, I prime this Army Painter Green, since most of the uniform color for that regiment is green. And then we're going to use some Nuln Oil, wash that down, and then we're going to build our green back up using Army Green from Army Painter, and as a highlight, Nurgling Green make it pop there. Now for the armored uh, ceramic transparent armor for the uh, cockpit, we're going to use coal black, a dark uh, blue-black color there. And we're going to put thick highlight of the fang and then a spot highlight of pallid witch flesh just to show some reflection. And all the uh, the large gun on the back. It's going to be Abaddon Black with a light highlight of Lead Belcher washed in Nuln Oil and then you know little touches of white there to make it look reflective. And the piping to show that it's the first armored cav is a base of iron rack with a light touch Pallid Witch Flesh over the top. And the gun ports in here are Runefang Steel with a Nuln Oil Wash. So, real simple paint job, comes together quickly. Now let's go ahead and get started. To start with, we'll need to prime our model. Now, normally I have to clean uh, these models, but the new Innisfear Command Lance um, pretty much all the latest releases from Catalyst Game Labs, this type of uh, plastic, really I don't see the point in cleaning up, so that saves a huge amount of time. Now normally when I prime my models, I will use standard Mechanicus Gray. But as I'm going for the 1st Federated Sons Armored Cavalry Regiment, uh, their base color is green with a white piping. So we're going to start off with Army Painter, Army Green. And this will save us a huge amount of time. So I'm going to prime this model up and we'll go on to the next step. Now the primer for the Marauder has dried. This is once again Army Painter's Army Green. That's this color. So if you don't want to buy in a specific primer color, gray or roughly gray or white, and army green over top of that. Now the next step, we're going to take some Nuln Oil, and this will change the tone of the model. So I've got a brush that I have beat to hell, and I am going to apply liberal amounts of Nuln Oil and one thing you'll want to do is turn them upside down when you apply them. That way, as the Nuln Oil runs down, you won't get any air pockets on the underside of the model. And this will just sink into the recesses. And already we can see it's bringing out a lot of detail on the model. All right, so this is going to take a while to dry, so we're going to set it to the side. And we'll be back once all this non-oil is dry, 
and we'll be ready for the next step. Our gnome oil has dried now. You can see it's really changed, darkened down the tone of the Army Painter Green. Given a drab look, gone into all the recesses. Now, what I've done is I've taken some, once again, Army Green, squeezed some out on the palette, and I'm going to take my small dry brush. I'm going to take a little bit of paint, and we're going to brush most of that off. And we'll start dry brushing back on again. And this will just catch to the raised surfaces. Notice what I'm doing is I'm really just dry brushing the parts where if we imagine light coming down, this is where it would be brighter, I'm largely leaving the underside alone. I'll well, keep going around doing that until we're happy with where the color's at. Alright, so I layered on some of my Army Painter Green. I'm going to do a final dry brush on here. I'm going to take some Nurgling Green, so really light green. i just get a touch of paint. All right, so we cut a lot of the detail on there. And just for good measure, just for good measure, I'm going to take some of the Nurgling Green. I'm just going to take some of the panels here. And little light streaks. And so we'll do as many of these as we feel comfortable with until we get the right effect on the armor. Primarily just focusing on where the light would touch. For the next step, I want to start picking out some of the black details on this. So I'm going to take my Abaddon Black, and I'm going to start working on the primary weapon system. And 
And to give the object a little more interest, I'm going to leave this casing green and this housing green. Kind of like they put a camouflage plate on top of their black weapon. Now we're at that point that anytime you feel like stopping, it'd probably be a good time. Depending on just how much detail you want to do it, go in. But right now we're getting close to table ready. There's some other things I want to pick out. So I'm going to grab some lead belcher. And for the hand systems, I'm going to go. They got really dark in there. I want to make sure you notice that they are weapons. So I'm going to put a little metal. Alright, now I'm going to work on the transparent armor of the cockpit. And notice I didn't say cockpit glass because cockpits don't use glass. They use what we call transparent armor because glass breaks and fractures. Transparent armor can stand up to a, a round. So we're going to take some coal black. Now this is similar to Games Workshop's Incubi, which is uh, basically a black with a hint of blue. And what we're going to do there is just take a little bit of this. And this will make, this type of black will make it uh, stand out as a little bit different from the Abaddon black of the weapon system near it. That way you can look at it and say, that's a little bit different. So it's not too matchy matchy, but black would actually work fine too. Whatever you have on hand, feel free to use it. Some people like to do red cockpits with the green armor as a good contrast. I don't know. I want something that looks a little bit more camouflaged. But what we'll do next is we want a little bit of reflection off the cockpit to show that it's a more reflective material than the doled down armor. I mean, if I wanted the armor to look like it shine, I put little touches of white highlight and give it the uh, illusion of being a reflective metallic material. But as it's camouflaged, I want it a little bit duller. But the ceramic armor, I want to show that it's a little bit more reflective. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my fang, which is blue-gray that I like. I'm just going to put little light streaks in here. show where the light's pooling and reflecting. So I added some layers. And just for fun, I'm going to take some pallid witch flush. And I'm just going to go Just little dots, little short streaks. I 
make sure they run parallel to each other. If they're not parallel, it gives it a sense of a uh, rounded reflective surface. No dot there. This one didn't come out parallel. That's good enough. Excellent. Uh, something I forgot to do. I'm going to take some rune fang steel. So this is a shinier metallic color than the lead belcher. I'm going to do. I'm going to highlight the weapon with the steel. Just little touches around the exhausts. There we go, that's just a little touch there. Then what I'm going to do is that'll serve my highlight for the black, so for the weapon system. Now I'm going to go back to my Nuln Oil. And on these metal parts, I'm just going to put a light little coat, a little character there. to dull down the silver. I want to give it the look of, you know, painted metal with the, some reflectivity, but I don't want it to overwhelm the black. I still want it to look like it's a camouflaged object. It's a tricky balance to get. And while I'm at these, these in, inlets, we'll darken those up a little bit more. Excellent. So we're going to let that dry and come back. So at this point in our model, I would be fine to stop. And that's what I would normally do in my other ones. I'd get this far, stop, and just seal the model. And the reason I would do that is I couldn't decide between the first Federated Sons Armored Cav Regiment or the second Federated Sons Armored Cav Regiment. The difference between them is in their parade ground camouflage. It's this green. And then first, the first Federated Sons armor cab has a white piping. And the second has a blue piping. And if you just leave it like this, you can say, well, it's either the first or second, depending on how you're feeling that day. But let's say you want to go ahead and do uh, the first. So that's going to be a white piping. And if you want to do the second, just do this, but with blues. But I'm going to start off with a iron rack skin. And what we mean by piping is, in a uniform, there's these uh, areas where you just have a long run of a particular color. And you can go onto Google, Google First Federated Sons Armored Cav Regiment, and you'll find a variety of artwork out there of people's different designs. There's even one of Federated Sun. But what I'm going to do and what I'm going to recommend is you need a really thin brush. And a lot of times moving, especially when you're new, getting the practice of drawing a straight line isn't fun. But what you'll notice about a lot of these Battletech models is there's these long, thin, straight plates. For example, down here on the foot. Just take your brush and a little bit of paint on them and just block those in. And since they're a flat panel, you can actually use your brush and just ride the edge, whatever panel you're blocking in, and just put it at interesting places around the model. 
Now, how much white you want to put on is up to you, but I'm trying to go towards the fewer because it's easier and faster. And also, I'm trying to say it's less the parade ground and more the battlefield. So, I'm trying to pretend to be at least a little camouflagey. So, you can see right there, you know, it actually also pulls out the interest in the model and showing off some of the detail. And so I'm just going around looking for rectangular pieces that I can paint with the iron rack. And the rectangles will keep me honest on the straight lines. I mean, it would be fun to do a long straight line down this panel, but this has got some curvatures to it, so trying to make it look symmetrical wouldn't be fun. So I'm going to pick out these three panels. I'm going to mirror it on the other side, and then we'll be back. Now I've finished picking out the parts I want white. So we've got here, here, here. I also did the rim around the firing port, and down here. But what you notice is that iron rack, I like as a color to match with the green, because it's actually quite similar to the Nurgling green. So it creates that relative color to it. You could see that someone would paint on top of the green with the iron rack green. It gets that dark look of a field piece of equipment, but you know, it's just kind of flat there. I mean, the rest of our panels are various shades of green and they're highlighted. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some pallid witch flesh, which is a, a brighter white, and we can see in our palette the difference between these. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight the top edge of these panels. So we get a nice straight line. Down here I'm going to make like a little triangle. So it's just a subtle color shift there, but it gives the appearance of more dimensionality to the model. And so here we'll just do you know, the object source lighting, just where the lighting will come down. You know, while I'm at it, I want a little more gloss top here. There we go. Make the barrel look a little more reflective. So, there we go. That's going to be my Marauder, part of my Command Lance for the 1st Armored Cav Regiment, Federated Sons. Well, thank you for joining us at Miniature Wargaming Labs, and we'll see you next time.